All right, guys, we've got a little adventure coming to you now. I'm afraid we've got the uh, little AC unit over there that's cranking. Um, I'll have to watch this video back myself to see how it affects the audio. Hopefully it's not going to be too bad. We're in the new room and I've got a little nook over here that I could have made into an office, but, uh, or no, a desk area, you know, um, but I'm playing around with using it as my uh, shaving area. Um, because the, uh, the bathroom here that's shared between uh, roommates and stuff is number one, uh, what if I'm in there shaving and a roommate needs to go to the bathroom, right? Uh, but also, it doesn't even have a mirror. It's very rudimentary. It's an old house. They just cut it up to make rooms and that kind of thing, which is why the rent is low, right? So that's cool. Um, but the gear we're going to use today, I wanted to use this Sterling finest badger uh, soon because in just a few days we'll be using the same set for the entire month of August and uh, we called it austere August uh, on, over on the wet shaving subreddit and I'm gonna be using the same the old Nasset blade I'm gonna step back to that I need to figure out which razor to use that reminds me I need to do that uh, look back I'm gonna look back in June and see which of those razors worked well with the Nasset. Some of them really did. And uh, this uh, brush is one that I recently got. Uh, I bought it used. This is the first version, the first iteration of the Sterling uh, two band, the finest badger that Sterling came out with. And so I'm looking forward, I got it wet. I worked it over with some Williams mug soap to strip out, clean it out, strip out any oils that might be in there. And so we're going to get him back in the water because his tips probably need a little bit of water. And we're going to be using the Charcoal Goods Everyday Razor because I wanted to try this blade, the Pole Silver Stainless. It's kind of an unobtainium type blade because there aren't too many rolling around anymore. Just maybe some guys who have big stashes because they bought them years ago, right? And it has given me a really good shave recently in a, um, uh, oh, in the fine accoutrements, world's finest razor. It did very well. It mowed down five days of growth without even batting an eyelash. It was terrific. The, uh, and so that razor is about a medium aggressive razor to me, at least. It's got a little bit of blade feel, chops down hair really well, and this is a smooth razor, more in the mild spectrum, probably why they called it the everyday. Because this ceiling right here <laughs> may be giving you some reverb, right? Uh, and then I decided that if I'm going to be using Midnight Stag from Chiseled Face for all of August, uh, what soap do I want to use? And I saw, I was looking through a, a box, and I saw Mitchell's Wool Fat, and I thought, I haven't used that in a while. It's a great performing soap. Let's use it. And this classic vintage look here is uh, in this ceramic container. I mean, it's really why I bought it. And uh, of course, because it's just a very reputable soap, a lot of people talk about it. Now, I haven't used it in a while, and you can see what happens when you don't. You got some water that evaporates out of the soap and shrinks it. And this is why with this type of, of soap and many other hard soaps, they do better at releasing the goodness within them if you use them on a regular basis. They can keep some of that moisture in the puck. Um, just that typical, I, I call it kind of a laundry clean scent, kind of a soapiness, uh, linen type scent. Looks like maybe the lighting is okay. I got a, uh, I have a little lamp right there. You can see the brightness there. And then, a, but it has a shade, so that's cool. It's not too drastic. Then I have another Dollar Tree light shining up at the ceiling to kind of bounce I could bend it over and put it right at me, but nobody needs that, right? Um, all right, so uh, I felt that a classic piece was good because today, since I'm not near a faucet, um, I mentioned to my parents, uh, I think maybe just my mom, that I was gonna be maybe thinking about shaving in my room instead of in the bathroom. They know about my weird, crazy shaving hobby, right? Uh, uh, not to the full extent of my craziness, but 
they know I like to use the old stuff and the soap and brush and all that, right? Well, it turns out my grandmother went on this ceramics kick for several years, if not a couple of decades. And we believe that she made this piece here. This is a basin bowl. You know what I should have marketed? I <laughs> should have come to you showing this as my newest lather bowl, right? <laughs> These are actually car, uh, you know, it's, it's a relief. And so it could have stirred up a lather there, a little bit of uh, texturing there. Um, we've got some like weirdness flying. Got the dude on a horse. Um, looks like he's, he's, he's got a cape. Um, he's riding a horse over a bridge through the woods. Grandmother's house, maybe. Uh, we've got some old timey dudes at like maybe a tavern. Maybe they're drinking. Maybe fighting. Who knows? Classic. There's a clock up there. So a pitcher on a table. A fire. Oh, a fire. A fireplace. A hearth. A dog. And then back to nature. So, uh, and I believe that same pattern is echoed on the pitcher. Isn't that wild? Yeah, yeah, same pat all oh, drinking. Got some drinking going on. There's that hearth with the dog. And so, uh, this was a piece that we believe she made. Uh, I think later on she started signing the bottom, and so, but this was a piece that was not signed, and so that's why I say we think she made it. And I'm just gonna go fill this up with water, and that'll be my water supply for the shave. And the basin will be under me when I do rinses and things like that. It might not be the most efficient thing. I might not do it as best as I will later, but you got to start somewhere, right? I'll be right back. All right, I am back. I uh, washed out the basin, and the tiny sink in there in the bathroom wasn't big enough for me to really put very much water in the pitcher because the pitcher's kind of tall-ish. And uh, what I did was I turned the shower on filled it up. Didn't take very long to uh, fill it up from the shower head. All right, so we'll give that a shot. Um, and while my hands are dry, let's put the pole silver stainless in the razor. I've used it two times already. This was a generous piff, and they called it a um, participation piff, where you you go onto the, the thread and you post your experience with the, with the item that you've won. And so I will do that. So the everyday is a smooth razor. And this blade has proven to cut well. And uh, just kind of wiggle it to make sure everything seats properly. And so I believe this is going to be a very good shave. All right, get my face wet. You know, it occurred to me, it occurs to me that straight razor shavers may have an easier time with this style of shaving without a running water source nearby. Many of those guys, in an effort to make sure that moisture doesn't get into that hinge of the straight razor uh, and cause problems, they will just wipe their lather off on a cloth instead of rinsing it out. So they might uh, might not have a problem with this kind of setup at all, right? All right, we've got a wet face. I haven't uh, cleaned it or washed it or anything, so we'll let the first pass of lather do that. After the shave, I had a very nice experience with the Aquavolva 5-in-1. The other day when I used it, it kept me feeling great for quite some time the next day. And the EDT, the smells on this one is Sterling Barbershop. I like that one a lot. Okay. Oh, and um, the camera. There's no mirror. I'm just relying on my uh, camera screen here to be the mirror. And what I did was I have a suction cup mount because everywhere else I've shaved, I've had a mirror, right? Glass, suction cup, there we go. Match made in heaven. Well, I don't have that now, but that's my only camera mount. So what I did was I went and I got a puck of soap, uh, a tub that had a, uh, a nice solid label without any ridges or anything that was as big as the su suction cup. And uh, it was one from Mystic Water. 
and I, it's the suction cup is on the soap tub, and then I can actually, you know, move it around as much as I want because it's just sitting there freest freestyle, you know. Uh, so there we are, and we had to pivot some hinges to make the camera point the right way, but that's all right. We're rolling. Okay, uh, let's load up. How long should I load for? Because it's been so long since I've used this soap. Um, let's try something like, I'm going to shake a good bit of the water out. Let's try 45 seconds just for grins. 30 rolled around right there. So that means I'll go to 15 on the next one. Because I knew it would be a longer load time, I don't think I shook the brush out as much as I might normally. Oh, and I've got a new bowl to show you guys. Picked it up at Walmart. Just a basic, standard, cheap plastic bowl for maybe a dollar and a half. And it, the dimensions look like it might be good for shave or for building up a lather, at least the dimensions that I look for. All right, five more seconds. I could be loading way too much soap into the brush here. We'll just have to see. The brush felt reasonably comfortable as I was uh, doing uh, the washout with the Williams. I did spread, I have a little table here. Uh, the camera is on the soap thing, on the soap book, and then that is sitting on a shelf unit. And, uh, and then my basin here is on a table. Right now I'm rinsing out my hand by lifting up the pitcher. And pouring that water over my hand. All right, there we go. So, oh yeah, the scent. It's just a nice, clean scent. Not super masculine, but it's just clean and enjoyable, kind of fresh. I like it. Are we crooked? There we go, we'll try that. Okay, so here, let me show you the bowl. And we're gonna contrast it in size with the lather bowl I've used so many times on this channel. Over the last few years the Roger Quintero 3d printed lather bowl so here this is a main part of the mainstays line at Walmart look the interior depth is probably about the same because I think this is a, has a thicker bottom here the outer diameter is a little bit bigger by well I just go by inner diameter so we're looking at maybe three quarters of an inch so that's that's larger but the depth seems to be about the same. Uh, there's, of course, it doesn't have the ridges and uh, the spokes and then the, the bump in the middle. So it's not gonna be able to offer that. It's not a purely smooth, it's kind of a matte finish. And there is a slight bump in the middle because there's an in, uh, inset right here. And so that might offer just a, a little bit of flexing. Now here's the thing, it's a very light bowl. So it could be good for travel. It flexes just a little bit. Available in several different colors at, at the Walmart I saw. And so um, we'll see if we'll see how well it sticks to my hand. And I've got big hands, and so a person with smaller hands might find this bowl a little harder to manipulate. So let's just see how that uh, see how it works today. Switch down to a better lather view. And I would say this is kind of a medium sized brush. And so, if he, uh, that'll be a, a good way to compare if we end up kind of being lost in the bowl. Now here's a good thing, if you have a bowl that's, you, you maybe um, bought one that was too big for you, you can tilt it and then focus on one part of the bowl in kind of the corner and thereby reduce the size of the bowl. But I'm, Kind of finding that I have plenty of room to work, of course, but it's uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm spending too much time in wasted motions, so this could be a real good option here. It's quieter than the Quintero bowl because the, the Roger, you know, uh, you know, you print those things and there, there's a little bit of hollowness in the, in the built in printing of the plastic, it's not solid plastic when you print it. All right, so we've kind of stabilized the early lather here. Oh, and now I don't have any way to rinse my hands easily, like when my fingertips 
And so I'll just wipe them on a towel. Let's just do that. All right, uh, let me load up my jigger from the pitcher. And so now we have 40 milliliters of water ready to be added. Um, I rarely, rarely need to add all of it. And so that's why it's a good measure. It's not super big, it travels well, but um, I rarely have to refill it and I don't have to keep count of how many times. See, look, it's so kind of light that I've really got a, that might be its biggest downfall. Of course you could, I wonder if there's some kind of handle you could glue on the bottom. You guys uh, have seen that Saponificio Veracino lather bowl. It's got that kind of a, uh, a dowel that just kind of goes on the bottom and makes it look like a big old chalice. And it actually disassembles for travel. And I, that was my dream lather bowl for quite some time just because I, I, I enjoyed their soaps and I didn't really know too much about what I preferred as a lather bowl but its expense kept me from trying it out. Then one day I looked at the size of it and knowing now what I do about the bowl size that I prefer it's much too small for me. Well, the lather seems to be mixing up quite well. I have enough room. It doesn't go too high on the walls to where I am not able to push it down properly. It's not overflowing. Looks like there's plenty of room. So uh, this is just another good option, it seems, for an inexpensive lather bowl. Keeping its shape, I believe the Mitchell's wool fat gets nicer. So let's add some more water. See if we can get it to more of a creamy state. As a reminder, if you don't have the time to watch things in full, uh, in regular speed, I can understand that. You can hit that little gear icon in YouTube and change the playback speed to maybe one and a quarter or one and a half. Sometimes you can still understand my words at one and a half. And so you can fast forward and watch it quickly. And then when you hear something interesting, maybe you switch it back to normal speed. Yeah, I think that did well. We've definitely improved the elasticity of the lather there. Yeah. All right. Bit of this extra on my face. So, so far, other than just being able to rinse off the little extra suds that get on my fingers so that I don't get suds on everything I touch, that's really been the only really major inconvenience. Of course, other than having to go somewhere and fill up a jug of water in the shower. Let's check this guy out. Look, he's still holding on unless I start to wiggle. It maintains his shape. Kind of. Let's keep adding a little water. I may be taking it too far. But why not? Just for fun. Let's see if we can get Mitchell Pool fat to a really creamy place. I'm afraid uh, Mitchell's wool fat may have seen a dip in quality. There were quite a, a number of people in the last couple of years that were reporting that they you know bought their puck and it just was a really poor lathering experience and it wasn't just uh, you know new guys it was guys who as far as I know really knew what they were doing 
And so maybe they had a bad batch come out, you know, and that's that's really too bad because it's not a it's not a big you know soap house. It's not like Taylor of Old Bond Street or something like that. Okay, we're looking at about uh, 22, 23 milliliters of water. I can feel it kind of start to be a, a thick, you know, a batter kind of kind of feeling here. I think that's probably a good thing. The brush felt pretty good to me on my palm as I kind of worked up a a mini lather as I was cleaning the brush with the Williams and so I'm pretty sure it's going to give me a good experience today it's not going to be too you know scratchy or anything like that oh see this has the appearance of a very nice lather look how smooth everything is ah look at the longer peak that we had when it dropped it's still kind of keeping its shape let's just go ahead and shave with it and not push it too much farther Mainly because of time, but uh, who knows? We can always take it farther next time if we feel like it. Okay. Get a little bit more water on my face. All right. Put this lather on, see how everything feels. Ooh. Those are some nice soft tips. feels like it's wadding up into a ball though yeah look the lather is completely kind of leaving the brush this may have been one that I took too far that's all right it's a good soap and so it should it should still give me a good A little bit of a, a little bit of backbone, you know, medium, I'd say. Now, unfortunately, because of the camera, I can't see where the soap is kind of building up on my brush. Sometimes I use that to know when to switch from scrubbing to painting, you know. So that's a little bit of a, a wish that I can change. But, you know, that's an easy thing to fix. Even if I change nothing else at all, I can go get a mirror. It's even a little small one, pedestal type. Uh, or, you know, one of those things that sits on a metal hoop, you know, and you can tilt it, put it right next to my camera. This, these tips feel very nice on my face. I don't like this handle because of these little ridges right there they're a little too predominant a little too in my face all right there we go rinse my fingers off and the right now the basin water is pretty clean because it's just kind of soap and water in a minute it's going to be as i rinse it i'm rinsing my razor in it it's going to have stubble and all that kind of stuff in it I wonder if I'll have to pause in the middle of the shave and take my basin out and empty it. All right, so I think we're ready to go. At a little disadvantage. Oh man, that's comfy. That feels just terrific. Very smooth. I mean, you can just barely feel the razor edge. And this thin lather that you can barely see on my face, it's very wet, of course. I'm glad I'm, I don't have a high stakes job where I need to make sure my sideburns are lined up. Because I could be totally miffing it this time. This is a wonderful combination for uh, people like me who like a good a good cut with a lot of comfort using the pitcher there to rinse 
there we go. Now we'll rinse the face. You know, I almost feel like a two basin system might be best, where I have a basin that's uh, mainly clean water. It's not the one where the stubble would be rinsed out of the uh, razor. Um, and that wouldn't be the one that I could kind of gather up armfuls of water and splash my face with, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and then a, a smaller one that would have the, the water for the rinsing of anything with stubble in it. And that one can get as, you know, grungy as it, oh yeah, this feels terrific. The tips on this brush feel really good. So, looks like maybe Mitchell's Wolf Fat is one that I need to put on my list of lathers not to go, not to go as, as wet as I usually go. Or maybe I just needed to spend more time working it, I don't know. How slick does it feel? Oh yeah, see, that's nicely slick, that'll get the job done. But I think it might be a little, a little slicker in this case. I think this soap might be purposefully built to need a little higher concentration of soap than what we're looking at right now. I could start out with more water in my basin, and then it would be easier to rinse things in it, you know. my face. Since this lather is really wet, I dabbed my face with a towel and that will help it to remove just a touch of water from the lather into my skin. This is a nice brush. I'm going to enjoy using it. It's definitely more relaxed. It doesn't have as much backbone as the the uh, finest badger that's out there now. The one at about the $34 price point. And that 45 seconds is kind of about right. Pretty much right. Three passes of leather. Just a little bit extra if I want to do a touch up or something like that. Alright. Cross grain again. I'm getting just a bit of drag from the, the razor because the soap really was designed to have more water than I'm using it with. Uh, less water. I don't know what I just said, but less water than I have given. I drowned the soap, but as you can see, it's performing well. Very comfortable. Yeah, I can just, there's not very much residual slickness because I uh, put too much water in the soap. However, there you go. The job is done. And that's going to be an easy rinse because there wasn't very much soap left by the end of the shade. You know, the Sterling line of soaps uses beef tallow and it's a great soap base. It's, it's really enjoyable even if you don't look at the price and how cheap it is compared to so many others. And, and so it definitely earns high marks as being a great value. Uh, I think many people acknowledge it as one of the best values out there, considering the fact that it's a, you know, good character people that do the business. It is a, um, a high performance soap. You get 5.8 ounces per tub uh, for your 12 or $13 instead of four ounces for $22, like a lot of other people. Um, but also they, uh, they have the mutton tallow base as well as the beef tallow. And so, uh, and that's most people, I mean, I haven't heard anybody say they like the beef tallow better in terms of performance. People are, because the mutton tallow is just, it's creamier. And the lanolin and um, uh, I think this uh, Mitchell's Wolf Fat is kind of along the line 
of, of that. And, and I, my skin actually does feel kind of moisturized and different um, than when I'm done with other shaves. And uh, I think there may be some people out there who like Mitchell's wool fat just for those reasons. So now I'm putting on my five-in-one balm here. I left my face a little wet because I do not, with my oily skin, I don't need this in high concentrations. I can afford to kind of spread it all over the place. I like it a little better than the Soap Commander Unscented that I have used before because the Soap Commander Unscented has a, a, a base smell to it. This has a very light uh, scent added to it. Does it say parfum in there somewhere? Yeah, fragrance. It has a, it's, but it's very light. I mean, it, yeah, well, it actually says on the package, lightly scented. And so I think that helps to get rid of the base scent, but it's not going to override any uh, soap or any product like that that you might have. So face is feeling great. Unfortunately, I don't have a mirror to be able to check the closeness of my uh, shave here, but I think it's pretty good. And we're going to put on some sterling barbershop. I like that. All right. I continue to enjoy putting the fragrance on my wrists and I'm greeted with it afresh whenever I move my arms around instead of getting blind to it by putting it on my face. Well, there we go. Um, a wonderful shave with this little brush. Um, let me, I got my rinse water down here. I can kind of plunge it around and I used maybe a quarter of the water that was in my pitcher, so I guess in theory I could just save this for the next day, and uh, maybe every four days I have to go and refill my shave pitcher, you know, if I keep on going with this kind of thing. Now, I think to get my brush really clean, I am going to, you know, take it to the bathroom and give it a good uh, work over there, but uh, I think Generally speaking, the, the basin pitcher method here um, worked pretty well. I'm at 25 minutes now of recording time, and I did pause when I did, you know, some actions, but I do that uh, with the old way as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, sure, I didn't get as, as good of a rinse in, in many cases, but I don't really think that's too much of a big deal. And uh, a nod to my, to my grandma. She was a sweetheart, loved to give good hugs. And uh, she's just a loving person, kind, and she would do macrame and uh, sang in the church choir. And they did one of those singing Christmas trees. And every holiday season, we'd go and uh, watch her sing in the in the big old tall uh, Christmas tree decorated with people, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, just a, a loving, uh, loving woman. And uh, she, uh, her house was kind of a time capsule for me. A lot of her decorations and stuff she just didn't change for decades right so it was like uh, and so there's something comforting about that stepping back in time when you go back and visit grandma all right anyway this one's for her and uh, and the joy that she brought to the world and uh, and there we go and sure enough the basin is um, uh, height wise it's up to the halfway point now since it goes out this way that's less than half full in terms of water but that's definitely an easy amount for me to take over to the bathroom and dump out. Uh, so there we go. Uh, cleanup shouldn't be too bad. I do think I might have to have a little bit of a towel here where I'm standing in addition to one on the, across the table here. And that way I'd feel better about water um, and uh, making sure I don't mess up any floors or anything like that. Uh, so positive experience in general. Um, you guys didn't have to listen to faucet sounds. <laughs> so there we go. And um, just a couple more shaves until we're in austere August. I'll be using Midnight Stag the whole time is the plan. I have not decided the razor yet. I've, I'm almost certain I'm going to use the uh, Samoke Owners Club with the Taj handle. It's got about maybe 60 uses on it, and I'd really love to uh, put some good, good uses uh, on it quicker than my other boards that are in kind of a static rotation. That are, They're growing, but just slowly. I'd like to have a bore brush that grows a little quicker. I used it last year, I believe, and uh, and so if I use it again this year, I think we're looking, we're getting close to 100 shaves with it, and uh, the Samoog brushes 
for me, they do get comfortable relatively quickly, like between uh, four and 14 shaves is all it takes before they're not really eating lather and they're comfortable in the face. But in terms of having those tips split to become magical, I think that's gonna be like 200 shaves or, or something like that before you really start to see that in a big way. I mean, a lot of the ones uh, around the sides are already split and so that is happening, but it's just a gradual process. I'm not doing any kind of accelerator with it because I want to keep the brush um, as healthy as possible. I want the splits uh, to go in, in just the best way they can. Uh, I think one brush, I had five tips off the same bristle. It split five, uh, technically I guess four times to make five different tips. And, uh, and that's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to getting a brush to, to do that and to experience that uh, comfort level and because that's what we are all hoping for with those bores, right? Okay, well, there we go. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup. Regarding this bowl, I think once my hands got wet, it became easier to hold the bowl. It still may be problematic for folks with smaller hands, uh, but you know what? You might be able to glue uh, some kind of knob or something on the bottom to make it easy to hold. Um, if you are you know, really needing a, uh, an inexpensive lather bowl, but in terms of the size, uh, and as you can see, I generated a very nice lather. You don't have to have ridges and things like that necessarily. They can speed up, in my experience, they can speed up the lather just a little bit, but not a ton. All right, the razor and blade here just worked really well today. A very comfortable, very sharp experience, but that sharpness was, was kept in check by the mildness of the razor. And that's often the way I have a nice sharp blade with a mild razor, uh, such as a feather blade inside of a Gillette Tech, or a, uh, uh, of course that's the pattern for the ASD2 from Feather, is to have the sharp feather inside of a mild razor. Uh, that so often is a wonderful combination to give you closeness and comfort at the same time. Uh, very pleased here with the Sterling Finest Badger brush. Uh, and here are those ridges that I did not like at first. But to be honest with you, once I was in the shave and everything, and even when the handle got soapy, they became less of an irritant. Uh, and so I think my fingers would get used to them. I think it's a neat look, you know? It's, I mean, you don't want all your handles to look the same, right? Uh, but uh, in terms of the tip softness, you can see they've, they're kind of clumping a little bit. They've definitely absorbed some water there. And, uh, and I like the backbone. I thought that the, the medium backbone was really good at keeping the tips at the right place, you know, toward my skin. Uh, so I definitely look forward to more shaves with this, with this brush. Mitchell's Wool Fat did great, except for the fact that I watered it too much and it still delivered a slick shave, uh, even when overwatered. All right, there we go. I have rinsed the basin out. The pitcher, obviously, is full of clean water. Don't have to do anything with it. So what I did was I took the, pit, the, uh, the basin uh, in one trip to the bathroom. It rinsed out pretty quickly. I took the lather bowl with the brush in it uh, to, the, to the bathroom so that I could make sure the brush was cleaned properly. Very important to get that soap out of those natural hair bristles. The, the alkalis or whatever it is in the soap can eat those away if you don't clean it properly and fully. And then with me, I also carried the razor so I could give it, I opened it up a little bit. So for some ventilation, ran it under the faucet to make sure that it got clean as well. So just two trips to the nearby bathroom and I believe everything is pretty, you know, that's all I need to do. Um, so that, that really wasn't too bad. We'll keep playing with the routine. And likewise, I think if I, if I kept the basin to be, uh, to catch what falls when I rinse and to catch, to hold my hand when I, if I need to rinse off my hand with some soap, you know, then it can fall into the basin. And basically the basin is just a little bit of soap with water. Um, and then I could use that to splash my face to rinse off my uh, face between passes. And then maybe if I had another container that started off with some water in it, and that could be my swish water to put my razor in there and clear it out and so that's where a lot of the stubble is going to go as well as of course a little bit of lather too 
and then that does add to me having to take another object to go and get rinsed out, but, uh, but then that lets me be able to splash myself with the water that was from the basin, uh, yeah, up kind of like that. Instead of having to use the pitcher and pour water into one hand, dab, that actually was an okay operation too, um, because I didn't, uh, but even when I had access to a faucet, I have not been doing full rinses, because you don't really need to go all the way with the water and get every soap off of your face, right? Just, just rehydrate your face a little bit. Anyway, we'll play around with the, the technique. Um, who knows? I Maybe this could help somebody out there who uh, may be in a similar situation, and they're uh, trying to figure out a way to have fun with this kind of hobby and they don't have access to a regular uh, bathroom facility and sink. Um, so it could be of help to somebody. All right, you guys, uh, face, my face feels good. Um, it does feel a little tacky, uh, and that's a good thing, I think, because I think that's the moisturization factors from the balm that we used, the Sterling Barbershop, ah, smelling nice. Uh, it definitely agreed with the scent of the uh, it's definitely not fighting the scent of the Mitchell soul fat, but it agrees with it in, 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 in its, uh, just by its nature. If I were to smell both of them side by side, I think they would go well together. And so it's a nice little story of scents from, from the soap to the, to the aftershave, uh, the cologne product. So there we go. Hope this helps you guys out there. I hope the air conditioner over there wasn't too much of an irritant and, uh, watching Olympics today, I sure was. And uh, Simone Biles, you know, had to bow out. A big, big deal today uh, with the Olympics. Uh, world's first surfing gold medal was won today by an American lady. Uh, or at least in the, uh, I don't know if they did women's surfing and men's surfing. Um, uh, but she won gold. Um, and then, uh, you know, some other really neat, uh, neat things. Um, oh, Great Britain killed it in the swimming. Um, uh, the, a Japanese uh, woman really did well in swimming and uh, beat one of our American, uh, two of our American girls. And then Katie Ledecky um, did her like 1500, 1600, a new swimming event. And she just kicked everybody's rear, pretty neat. Um, and, uh, and there we go. So it's fun just to watch all the nations compete and cheer for your nation. And uh, all the best to you guys. Again, this Pulse Silver Stainless was the blade of today. And, uh, and it's such a kind donation uh, from um, a, a guy out there said, hey, does anybody want this? Sign up below. And so I signed up and I, I was, he had a lot to give out. And so a lot of people were, are able to benefit. How kind is that, right? They had like a hundred or who knows. And so they just uh, gave away five each to, uh, maybe he had 200. Um, uh, and so a lot of people are gonna be able to experience this this blade who, who would not have uh, out of the, because of the kindness of those guys, uh, Grundy, I believe, is one of the guys who um, at least was doing the sending, may not have doing the providing, he may not have done the providing of the blades. Anyway, uh, there we go. You guys, uh, happy Olympics to all of you. Um, and this was a basin and pitcher shave from me, Sugar Daddy Shaves. All right now, you guys, take care. Good night.